You are listening to the Healthy Leader Podcast with Tracy Fisher, episode number six. Welcome to the Healthy Leader Podcast, where it's all about optimizing your health, energy, and performance for your mind and your body. And now, your host, Master Coach Tracy Fisher. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. I have to tell you that this topic about the secrets of feeling better is for me and you today. (laughs) I am getting ready for a trip, the first trip in a very long time, to New York City. And I'm going there to help my daughter move from one busy street in New York City to another busy street in New York City. And I honestly have no idea how we're going to make it happen. And I'm also going to be going to my 30th reunion, my 30th college reunion. And so the combination of those two events are really exciting and I'm totally looking forward to them. And I'm experiencing some anxiety about getting everything done and how will things fit together. And so I get to practice what I am going to share with you today. And I was practicing it earlier today. So this is a perfect day to talk about the secrets to feeling better. So over the last two episodes, I have talked about the secret to taking consistent action. And then this last episode was about using thoughts to create emotions. And emotions and guiding our emotions and understanding them are what help us to take consistent action. So it is that TEA cycle that I'm continuing to talk about. Our thoughts create our emotions and our emotions create our actions. And knowing that cycle is the secret to taking consistent action And it's also the secret to feeling better, thinking on purpose, feeling on purpose, and doing, taking your right action on purpose. And so today we're really going to dive into that center echo, the E about the emotion piece. And this is really important because so many of us have been taught to ignore, disregard, or stuff our emotions. And we've been taught that since childhood from very well-meaning and well-intentioned parents. And it's very cultural. Many of us heard big boys don't cry or don't be a baby. And my own mother, bless her. I love her. She's a fantastic parent. I do remember she used to say to me, you want something to cry about? (laughs) I'll give you something to cry about. And the other interesting parenting moment that I learned about several years ago was in a coaching class for parenting. And they talked about when you have a child clinging to your leg in a family reunion and you're pulling them off of your leg and you're like, go give, you know, Aunt Sally or Grandma so-and-so or this cousin a hug. Go say hello when your child is clearly nervous or shy or not feeling like they want to. And we pull the children off of our legs and make them go behave a certain way. We basically are very well intentionally saying, disregard your emotions and do the right thing. And this gets reinforced as we get older. We are all about doing the right thing, getting the right grades, getting into the right college, getting the right job, getting the right amount of money. And it's all about the mission and focusing on the mission. And in the army, it certainly was, we really don't care how you feel about it. We just want you to get it done. And and that is important, right? We do need to get the mission done. We have heard, don't let them see you sweat. For women, ooh, you do not want to be emotional in the office. You need to be calm and collective. Now, I want to be clear here. I'm not talking about, you know, being totally overly emotional in the office or, you know, airing everything that is going on with you with other people. What we're talking about is understanding our emotions and using them on purpose. And understanding our emotions help us to take our right action, to do what is our next best thing to do. And I work with people very closely on taking the right action. So I have many people come to me who know what they want to do. They want to go to the gym or they want to be kinder to their spouses or they want to ensure that they get their projects done and stop procrastinating, but they're not. They're not following through on what they want to do or they are doing things that they don't want to do. And there's a lot of frustration around that, especially for people who are highly successful. And I hear many people say, I don't get it. I'm so successful in so many other areas of my life. Why can I not just get it together in this one area? And then clients come because they want to feel better. They want to feel less stressed. They want to experience more peace, more freedom, to be happier. And all of that can feel very elusive. And so what we end up doing is we think that if we get more, if we reach a certain result, then we will feel better. 
And this is a huge misconception. We think if we have a certain dollar amount in the bank or a certain weight on the scale, or if we have found the perfect job or the perfect partner, that then that will be the secret to feeling better. And that, my friends, is totally not true. And I'm sure some of you know that, and I know that from personal firsthand experience and then also from working with many, many executives. And I'll share with you that there was a point in my career where I was running a very successful health and wellness company, and I personally looked the part. I had the lowest body fat that I'd ever had. I had the highest muscle mass I'd ever had. And from the outside in, it looked like I had it going on. Three kids, white picket fence, all looked well, but it really wasn't. Even though I had attained the physical health that I wanted, I still did not have the emotional and mental health that I wanted. And so having the body that you want or the money that you want or the career that you want does not equate to happiness. And many of you know that firsthand as well, that that's not the secret to happiness. And that is an important point that I am clear on at the get-go with all the clients that I work with because we know that there's a specific result that they are looking for. They are looking to improve their health. They're trying to improve their energy levels or performance, personally, professionally, relationship-wise, communication. And that result we can get. We know how to get that. And that result does not mean that you will be any happier. <laughs> so people are like, what? say what? Of course, when I get that thing, that's when I'm going to be happy. And the reason that the external results are not going to make you happy is because it's not those results themselves that make you happy or feel fulfilled or confident or whatever the emotion is. It is your thoughts about that result that makes you have a certain emotion. And I'm going to say that again. It is not the result that you have achieved that creates an emotion it is the way that you think about that result because our thoughts create our emotions and our emotions create our actions and our actions create our results. And I'll prove it to you. And I want to use something that I learned when I was in, I think one of my very first mastermind classes at the Unity Church. And this mastermind class was designed to help you create whatever it is that you wanted in your life, that result that you wanted. And one of the very first things that we learned was to identify what emotion that result would bring us. So you could be looking for a great relationship or to lose weight or just to reduce your golf handicap, repair a relationship, have more work-life balance, maybe get promoted or buy a new car. So whatever the result is, I want for you all right now to get something in your mind that you actually want. And if you are in a place where you can write it down, write it down. Get really specific about what it is that you want. And then here is what we would do in this mastermind course. We would say, okay, well, why do you want that? Or what else? Or can, tell me, can you tell me more? And so here's an example. There's someone in our group, I remember, who wanted a red convertible Mustang. And I think maybe at the time it was like <laughs> brand new 2000, year 2000. And so this is what the process looked like. We're like, okay, why do you want that? And they were like, because it'll be cool. Why will it be cool? Well, because it's a really cool machine. It goes super fast. The driving is really smooth. And we'd say, well, why is that important? And they're like, well, that's important to me because it feels special. It feels exclusive. And so right there is the emotion. That person wants to feel special. Somebody else might have said, uh, you know what? The reason I want that red convertible is because people will be looking at me and thinking, you have got it going on. And then we ask, well, what does that mean? What if someone thinks you've got it going on? Well, then that means that they like what they see. All right. If they like what they see, what does that mean about you? Well, it means that I'm respected and that I'm likable. And then what does that mean? And eventually it gets down to something like, well, then that means that I am worthy. And there's another emotion. Somebody else might say, I really want this car because it's fast and it's smooth. <laughs> And we ask, well, why do you want a fast and smooth car? So I get on the auto on or on the highway and just get away. And we keep asking why and what else. And it comes down to so I can feel free. And so anything that you want, dollars in the bank, a relationship, a new level to your business, take it all the way to the level of the emotion and uncover, discover what it is that you want to feel. Because the bottom line is that we begin to understand that everything that we want and everything that we do comes down to the way it will make us feel. 
And so I want to ask you, how do you want to feel? What is it that you want to feel that seems so elusive? What emotion are you going for? And then know that you can create that feeling anytime you want. Because thoughts create emotions. Results don't create emotions. Thoughts create emotions. And that, in a nutshell, is the secret to happiness. It is the secret to peace. It's the secret to joy. And it's also the secret to not happiness and not peace and not joy. And so remember that your thoughts create your emotions. And if that is the case, then that means when you practice managing your thoughts, that you can actually practice creating your own emotions. And when I learned that, I was like, holy schmoly. I'm the one who is causing my own angst. I'm the one who is causing anxiety. I'm the one who is causing my own joy. I am responsible for my own emotions. I am response-able. I am responsible. So when you are noticing the emotions that you are having, it's a great opportunity for you to say, whoa, wait a second. What am I thinking? What am I creating here? And that's going to be the first step of three that I'm going to share with you in terms of the secret to creating happiness or whatever emotion you want to create. But before I go into that, I do want to emphasize the difference between a feeling and an emotion. Now, I've been using the word feeling interchangeably right now, but I want for you to understand the vernacular. And the difference between an emotion and a feeling is this. An emotion is a feeling. It is a feeling that is caused by our thoughts. Feelings or physical sensations that we have in our bodies are not caused by thoughts. They are caused by something occurring in the external environment and our body reacting to it. It's like a feeling goes from our body up to our brain and an emotion goes from our brain and down into our body. So an example of this could be if your face is feeling warm because you're outside. So it's a feeling of warmth on your face that you get from the sun, you also can have the feeling of warmth from the emotion of embarrassment, from your thought of, oh my goodness, I'm so embarrassed, I can't believe I did that, and then you have this feeling of warmth in your face. So the sensation may feel very similar, but an emotion is caused by your thought, whereas that physical sensation from the sun is caused by an external source. So understand that so that when you are noticing physical sensations that you can begin to discern where they are coming from. And that's an important distinction to make as you begin utilizing these three mini secrets to feeling better. So I'm gonna share this with you now and I wanna tell you that I like to keep things simple. I like for you to be able to use them immediately, for me to be able to use them immediately. So all you have to remember for these three mini secrets is childhood fire safety, stop, drop, and roll. So the first one is to stop. And what I mean by that is to literally stop. Stop writing the email. Stop in mid-sentence. Stop yourself. Interrupt the rush to go to the next thing so that you can be present. So you can be present to those physical sensations because those emotions do begin with a physical response. And many of us just ignore it. We aren't even aware of what is going on. So for example, our anger might be showing up as a rapid heartbeat or sweating or that warmth in our face or even chest tightness. And some people are not even aware of that. They are experiencing their emotions as thoughts. They are thinking, I am angry, I'm really annoyed. And I'll give you the example that I was working with a gentleman and he was talking about really feeling agitated and annoyed with certain clients and that they were taking too long or they weren't getting back with him. And so I asked him, well, how do you know that you are feeling agitated? And he, like many of us, was out of touch with his physical body. He rarely was thinking about those physical sensations, those emotions. He was just focused on his thoughts about being angry or stressed or annoyed. And so if I asked him, what are you feeling? He was like, you know what, I don't know. And if you are thinking that, know that it is quite common. And that's why the first secret is to stop. And then the second one is to drop. And that means to drop into your body and to notice what is going on in your body. Notice those physical sensations. Become aware of them. And I want to caution you here that this takes practice. You may know that you are angry or joyful or experiencing any emotion, but you can't feel it physically in your body. 
take the time to just go there and to drop in and to see what it feels like and to identify the physical sensation that you are experiencing and then make sure that you name it, label it, identify that emotion. Now, you may be feeling multiple emotions, but to start off with, I would just say to pick one emotion. Say, you know what? I feel butterflies in my stomach. I'm nervous. That's what I'm noticing. That's what I am feeling. That's the emotion that I am associating with it. And if you are in the midst of this and you're like, I don't know, I'm not really sure, then just say, if you had to guess, if I had to guess, what would I guess that this emotion is? And this is extremely important. It seems a little reductive, um, but here's what happens. You are building self-awareness. It is crucial for you to be aware of the feeling in order to observe it moving through you and to notice what is happening because that takes us to the third piece, which is to roll with it, to understand the emotion, to feel it, and to let it take its course. <laughs> And sometimes I say that and people are like, are you kidding me? I really do not want to be feeling this emotion. I would rather ignore it and just go on with my day. But I want to share with you that there is a Harvard brain scientist. She's extremely famous, Dr. Jill Taylor, and she has done some research and she has let us all know that it only takes 90 seconds to identify an emotion and then to allow it to dissipate. So if you have a reaction to something in your environment, so let's say that you come across a snake or you know a car honks its horn and you have a quick reaction, there's this literally a 90 second chemical process that happens in the body. And then after that, any emotional response that is left is a person choosing to stay in an emotional loop. So something that happens in the external world, chemicals are flushed through your body, puts you on full alert. And then for those chemicals to totally flush out of your body, it takes less than 90 seconds. That means you have 90 seconds to watch the process happening. You can feel it happening and then you can watch it go away. And what that means is, and this I think is like a total drum roll, is that you can do the same thing with your emotions. If you are continuing to feel fear, anger, whatever, you look at your thoughts and see that you are re-stimulating the circuitry that is resulting in you having this physiological reaction over and over and over again. So it's like having these ocean waves, they rise and they crest and then they recede. And so Dr. Taylor's research shows us that that wave process takes about 90 seconds. And if you're able to stop, identify the emotion, label it, accept it and roll with it and not shove it down or deny it or, or conversely magnify it or make it a really big deal and observe it, that it literally will only last 90 seconds. You roll with it. I think that that is totally cool. So here's the challenge to all of this. <laughs> Feeling your emotions can be painful. It can also be really scary and confusing. And it is completely natural to want to avoid them. Our brains are designed to seek comfort, to avoid pain, and to do that as quickly as possible. So the great news is that you can build up your tolerance for emotions, just like you can strengthen muscles by going to the gym. You practice stopping, dropping, and rolling. You practice observing and accepting your emotions. It's like going to the emotional gym. So this psychological workout builds self-awareness. And as you build this self-awareness, as you start to lead yourself, then those hijacks, those reactions, those emotions that are taking you over fewer and fewer and fewer. The other challenge is that sometimes we can feel like the emotions are completely overwhelming, that the wave never eventually recedes. We feel like it's just like one emotion after the other after the other. And this always can be traced back to your thoughts. And when we are feeling stuck in a constant thought, a constant emotion, and many times I hear anxiety, overwhelmed, self-doubt, that is when we go back to the thoughts that we are thinking that are re-stimulating those emotions. We are having those same physiological reactions over and over and over again. This is so important and such amazing work that I love to do with people because it gives you this incredible connection with your body to understand, to stop, drop, and roll, and understand your emotions and realize that you can handle them.
that you can do anxiety, that you can do a little bit of fear, and then you can practice using your thoughts to change those emotions. So this is like a double edged sword and you can use both of them. You can use your thoughts to change your emotions and you can use your new emotional secrets to manage your emotions and to go with them and to know that you can handle any emotion that comes your way. Now there are a couple of other roadblocks that you might come up against. So know that sometimes people just forget. <laughs> they forget to stop, drop and roll because you have a highly scheduled life. And so what I would like to invite you to do is to set a timer to remind yourself throughout the day to stop and to drop and to roll and to notice what is going on in your body and to practice that just at random times throughout the day. For sure, practice it when you are noticing emotions coming up. If you are feeling agitated or annoyed or frustrated or whatever is going on to use the stop, drop and roll. The other thing is please do not feel discouraged. Like any new habit, especially a mental and emotional habit, it takes time. It takes time to practice and to notice and to feel and see what is going on and to label them and then to allow them to dissipate. That is not necessarily an easy thing to do. And so expect for sure, at first it's going to look messy. It'll feel really messy and it is totally supposed to. I kind of want to just bang on my desk right here and say, please do not be discouraged. It is messy, especially if you're just now getting in touch with your thoughts and your emotions and how they correlate and what does it feel like. And we've all, as we said at the beginning, are taught to, you know, disregard our emotions and stuff them. So know that do not get discouraged. And then finally, I encourage you to go through this process with someone else. Do not go it alone. Research shows that building resiliency and new cognitive habits is easier when you do it with others. So connect with others who are working on the same thing. I invite you to come to the wellness dot coach and experience some of our resources, experience our private group and check out what we have there for you so that you can feel supported as you are practicing creating whatever it is that you want to create. So thank you for your time, for being here with me, for being what I call welling or willing to look underneath the lid <laughs> of your forehead and to go into your brain and recognize your thoughts and then to go into your heart and to recognize your emotions so that you can do your next right thing, take your right action and create the results you want and to live the most amazing life you possibly can, the life that you absolutely deserve to live. So go forth and create that and create an amazing, healthy, energized, and beautiful day. Hey there, if you are ready to take your well-beingness to the next level, come visit the wellness.coach where I've got lots of free resources. And make sure that you type in the wellness.coach, not.com, and I will see you there.